Hello and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2, where today I'll be discussing the game's biggest fundamental issue that I don't see a lot of people talking about on YouTube. The reason why I'm making this video is because it explains why I'm yet to make a tour video for my Jurassic Park San Diego build, and why it still may be a few weeks until I make that video. So I'm going to stop beating around the bush and get on with what is Jurassic World Evolution 2's biggest problem and that is Bugs and Frontier's approach to bug fixes. Since the game's launch it has been a big pile of shit because of the amount of bugs living inside it. Now I'm not saying the game itself is bad because if it was I wouldn't have poured hundreds of hours of my life into it. I want to make it clear that this video is only going to focus on bugs and glitches and not other things such as gameplay mechanic flaws or what some may consider being missing content. But without further ado, let's get into it. So starting off, I wanted to talk about Jurassic World Evolution 2's history when it comes to bugs as well as some of the newer and more current issues, then I'll move on to Frontier's approach to fixing said issues, which is definitely the biggest problem. I've actually been quite fortunate when it comes to bugs, so I'm only going to really discuss the ones that I've personally encountered, as well as ones I know about from Reddit and YouTube. So if I do miss a bug that you've encountered, let me know in the comments and tell me whether it has been fixed or not. Possibly the largest and most well-known issue that was in the game at launch was the glitch where dinosaurs were able to phase through fences and pterosaurs were able to phase through aviary domes. No matter what game mode you were playing, this was incredibly annoying. It wasn't even a case where it would only happen every once in a while, this happened very frequently. While playing challenge mode, you could have more dinosaurs than you can count on two hands just wander out of their enclosures in a single session. And this issue lasted for a long time and I believe it was on three separate occasions that Frontier said that they had actually patched it. Fortunately, in the last 6 or 8 months, I haven't really seen it happen, nor has anyone else really talked about it. Another fairly game-breaking bug is when you reached a building limit which caused whatever map you were playing on to pretty much stop working. Usually it would either crash when placing a building or decoration, when manipulating the terrain, or just whenever the game felt like it. This isn't really an issue anymore, but the more detailed your park becomes, then the more your game begins to stutter, and I honestly don't know how they'd fix something like that. I know that some people complain about their game crashing when building a park, but there is a solution which can help, which is going into your settings and turning down the frequency of autosaves. Another bug I encountered early in the game's life is what I like to call the death loop. This is when an animal would turn on the spot until it would starve to death. The only way you could stop this was to either dart the animal or take control of a jeep and honk your horn at it until it ran off. I found this happened mostly in sauropods but like I said, I only really encountered this early on and haven't seen it since. A more recent issue that I don't really know the nature of because it doesn't affect me was the state of the game on Xbox. It was pretty much unplayable. Within a few minutes of people trying to play the game, it would either freeze or crash. This rightly made people very angry and Frontier didn't really acknowledge the problem which made it only worse. And from what I can tell, it was eventually fixed, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it did take much longer than it should have. The release of the Malta expansion also coincided with more bugs popping up as well as making the campaign almost unplayable. Are you noticing a pattern here? I think the majority of people experienced some sort of bug with the new expansion. I got lucky with the game only crashing once and losing a couple minutes of progress whereas other people would be unable to continue playing due to constant crashes. Even after a patch a couple weeks later people were still experiencing issues and still are. Again, this made the community very angry. And herein lies Jurassic World Evolution 2's biggest problem, which is Frontier's poor approach to bug fixes. For a AAA title to be out for over a year now and still have as many bugs as it does, it's just disappointing. Players having to wait weeks or even months for a bug that is preventing them from either playing or enjoying the game is just not acceptable. There are indie games with an absolutely tiny development team that have more frequent bug fixes than Jurassic World Evolution 2. I don't work for Frontier nor do I know much about game development but this just doesn't seem right. Frontier seems to focus more on the content rather than the quality of the game. As a community, not only are we mad, but we are disappointed. Now as for what's stopping me from making my San Diego Park tour, 
is a bug where when dinosaurs engage in a social interaction, they will start shaking. And I wanted to do a really nice, I guess, cinematic style tour, which I used to do, but this has really demotivated me from making it, and I probably won't make it until it's fixed. When will that be? Who knows? Hopefully in the update that should be coming out in the next couple weeks. That is going to be the end of this fairly short video. I hope you agree that this is a major problem for the game, even if you aren't really affected. I made this as an angry rant, and hopefully I got my point across. More long form videos should be coming soon, I know I've been doing mainly shorts recently, but hopefully that'll change. But thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!